Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello. My name is Sarah Palmira, and on my channel, we talk everything from makeup to skincare to hair care, all things beauty. I would so appreciate it if you would stuck around, liked this video, turned the notifications on so that you'll always know when I post a new video, and subscribe. Today, we are talking about how to get glass skin in the winter. No easy feat. And as someone with chronically dry skin, I'm here to share all of my tips with you from skincare to makeup application for how to to get this simple, I promise, skin look. And this is really gonna be a game changer for you for keeping your skin nice, plump, dewy, and hydrated all year long. So if this sounds like your jam, give this video a like so that I know that you like videos like these. And let's get into all of my tips and tricks right now. All right, so the first rule when it comes to having glowy glass skin all winter long is to understand the difference between dehydrated versus dry skin. And yes, you can have both. And you can have dehydrated but oily skin. So let me help break it down for you. Dehydrated skin is a skin condition, not a skin type. And it is characterized by your skin's inability to hold and retain water within the skin. So oftentimes I'll talk about dehydrated skin on my TikTok and I'll get comments like, okay, you finally convinced me I'm going to start drinking more more water. And it's not really about that. It's not because your skin has a lack of water. It's because your skin's not able to hold it in. So we'll get to how to address that in just a minute. Now, dry skin is a skin type. Now, it doesn't have to be your permanent skin type. You don't have to marry yourself to it, but some people have genetically drier skin. I have genetically drier skin, and it's characterized by very little oil in your skin. Your skin does not produce enough oil. And so often with that skin type, you'll see dryness, you'll see flakiness, patchiness, uneven texture texture, rough texture, maybe even some bumps around the forehead and cheeks, but your pores will be very, very minimal. They won't be super visible. Now, if you have dehydrated skin, you're going to notice imbalanced oil production, maybe oily areas, but also really, really tight areas. You might see larger pores across your T-zone and your skin will feel uncomfortable and tight. It might also be a little bit red, prone to irritation, and that's when you get into a damaged or weakened skin barrier as a result of dehydrated skin. And you can cause dehydrated skin all the time by choosing the wrong products, over stripping your skin with cleansers, maybe you're over exfoliating, or you're just not using enough hydrating products. So let's talk about how to address both of these skin types. And I'm going to show you my routine to create a beautiful glowy base. And I'm going to show you how to make what I like to call a hydration sandwich, where you basically stack layers upon layers of hydrating and nourishing products to really help your skin retain moisture. Now, if you're dry, you may want to go for more oil-based products. And if you're dehydrated, you're going to want to go for more water-based products with humectants. I'm going to list the different ingredients that you should be looking for for each skin type here. I have both dehydrated and dry skin. So I am going to do a mixture of layering water-based products and sealing them in with maybe more oil-based products. Let's do this. Starting off with my little headband to get my hair out of my face. Step number one is toner. This is assuming that you have just cleansed your face and it is slightly damp. Now there are two different categories of toners. There are exfoliating toners and hydrating toners. I like to do usually hydrating toners. My absolute favorites are the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Hydrating Toner. This contains a lot of really calming ingredients such as oat to really calm any kind of redness or irritation on the skin. And toners are a really great way to add hydration in your skin without clogging pores. So if you're acne prone or oily, grab a hydrating toner. I also absolutely adore the Claire's Supple Preparation Facial Toner. This is a staple of mine. It has so many beautiful humectants in here to really just prepare your skin to absorb all of the other products that are hydrating much better. And I also do love an exfoliating toner, but if I'm using it daily, it has to be super, super gentle. I absolutely love the Aloe BHA Skin Toner by Benton. This is very, very gentle. It has 0.5% BHA, which is perfect for kind of balancing that oily skin, but it also has hydrating humectants in here that's going to help help add some hydration as well. The Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow PHA plus BHA toner is an amazing alternative. It's packed with really hydrating and soothing humectants that are really gonna help balance out that exfoliation. So I don't use this every day, but I can definitely use it three to four times a week with no problems. So depending on your skin concerns, if you're dealing with some congestion as well as some dehydration, I would reach for an exfoliating toner. And if your concern is just hydration, then I would reach for something like this. Now, the way I like to apply toner is I like to actually 
usually just pour it into my hand directly. That way I don't waste any product. I just pat it into the skin. I like to take my toner and my hydrating ingredients around the eye area. I usually patch test like right along here, but if I have no problems, then I do take it onto the eyelid and the eye area because that can really plump any fine lines around that area and makeup is gonna go on there so much better. Next up, we have essences. And I know what you're thinking, why is the Laneige Cream Skin Toner in your essence category? Well, because it really does behave like an essence. This is a milky, thicker, more viscous toner that is packed with really hydrating ingredients. It's also really easily accessible. It's on Sephora's website, where some of these other ones you have to get from authentic K-beauty retailers. I also absolutely love the COSRX Advanced Snail Mucin. You've heard me talk about this a ton on my Instagram, and I absolutely adore it. It's a holy grail for me. I actually have three bottles of this. This contains snail mucin. And if you don't know what snail mucin is, it's essentially a little byproduct residue off of snails. COSRX has assured me that no snails are harmed in this process. And snail mucin naturally contains copper peptides, which are really great for boosting collagen production, as well as hyaluronic acid. And they are really, really deeply soothing and hydrating. And then I absolutely love the Neogen Real Ferment Micro Essence. This is amazing if your skin barrier is damaged because it contains a lot of fermented ingredients that not only help with the brightness of your skin, but they also really help balance your skin's microbiome. So if your skin is under a lot of stress, this is an amazing way to balance it. This is probably the lightest essence that I have out of the pack, so it's perfect for oilier skin as well. And then I have the Skin Food Honey Propolis Essence. This is newer to me and I absolutely adore it. This is very thick, very kind of juicy. This is perfect if you're really dehydrated. And Propolis is incredible for really brightening and hydrating the skin. It is packed with a ton of ingredients that not only help soothe and calm the skin, but it's also microbial. So that's awesome if you have acne. I love the dropper as well. I like to take some in my palm. I'm just gonna pat that into the skin and you're gonna see how as we layer these products on top of each other, it just really helps the skin just absorb more and more hydrating products. And we're gonna seal it all in with a moisturizer at the end. But already we can see that there's a bit more glow to my skin and I'm not weighing it down with a super heavy moisturizer. I don't need to do that. After Essence comes serums and we have two different categories. So I have more water-based serums. These are great for oilier skin types or if you have dehydrated skin. And then I have more oil-based serums, which are great for drier skin types. I have the Anculist Hyaluronic Acid Serum here. This is less than $10 and it is such a lovely hyaluronic acid. It's not sticky and it's not irritating. The texture is so, so nice on the skin. Don't be fooled by the tiny bottle. It's actually one full fluid ounce on damp skin. It is incredible for just plumping up fine lines and wrinkles. And then we have the Vichy Mineral 89. This is a holy grail of mine. I absolutely love it. This is slightly richer in texture. It's more heavy and it's a bit more gel-like than the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid, but I absolutely love this. I actually notice an instant difference with this one when I apply it. My skin automatically looks more plump and hydrated. And then we have the COSRX Propolis Ampule. Again, this is a really lovely ingredient that is really helpful for also brightening dark spots. Also contains glycerin, butylene glycol, sodium hyaluronate. So it's a very humectant packed. This is also water-based. And in my heavier serum category, I have the Coco Kind Ceramide Barrier Serum. This is one of the best, most affordable barrier repair serums on the market. Ceramides are the building blocks for our skin. They really help our skin barrier. And this is such a sophisticated serum at a really affordable price. So I always, always reach for it. It is actually light enough to be used on oilier skin types as well. So if just water-based serums are not your jam or you want to mix and match, or you have been using hyaluronic acid in a lot of your products and you want a little break, this is amazing. And then I have a very underrated favorite from Paula Choice. This is the Omega Complex Serum. I have talked about this in my Sephora favorites, but this is a richer, more solid oil-based serum and it contains chia and flaxseed and a lot of plant-based oils to really nourish the skin. This is more nourishing than hydrating. It's great for dry skin, especially in the winter. And then we have the PSA Skin. This is the Liquid Panacea Serum. I'm obsessed with it. This is like glass skin in a bottle and it contains kombucha, which is very, very balancing. This is a fermented ingredient that's gonna really help nourish your skin's microbiome, as well as centella, which is really great for irritation and redness. So I'm gonna go in with this one. This is not hyaluronic acid based. It's kind of in the middle of oil-based and water-based. It's more like a gel, but I absolutely love it. 
it. I love the texture of this. It's an amazing base for makeup. And of course, the last or second to last layer of our hydration sandwich is moisturizer. Now, by this time, my skin is pretty plump, okay? It's not pilling or anything because I'm giving the steps time to sink in. Sometimes I don't even need a moisturizer at this step. I just need to go in with my sunscreen. And you don't have to do a hydration sandwich every day. The beauty of the hydration sandwich is it's completely customizable. You can do this on extra self care days. You can do this at nighttime. You can do this in the morning before you do your makeup for a beautiful base. Really, it is up to you. But let me talk you through some of my favorite moisturizers. For water-based or more gel-like moisturizers, I love the COSRX Advanced Snail Mucin Cream. This is a super interesting texture, very sticky and gel-like, but I promise it actually does dry down really nicely on the skin. And it's just very, very lightweight. So I think this would be really great if you are oily or acne prone or you're just dehydrated. And then for oil-based moisturizers, I am obsessed. This is my second bottle with the Stratia Liquid Gold. This is such an amazing skin strengthening moisturizer. It contains ceramides and it also contains propylene glycol, niacinamide to really help soothe the skin, sea buckthorn seed oil. I also love the packaging because I don't have to dip my fingers in or worry about contaminating the product. This is a yellow color. A little bit goes a really long way. And I'm gonna mix and match here and use a more rich oil-based moisturizer because I am not only dehydrated, but I am dry. But if you are already feeling kind of tapped out at this step, you could just skip and use your sunscreen as the final layer to really trap all of that moisture in the skin. I wanna do a skin close-up before we reach for makeup, just so you can see how amazing this has really helped my skin look. No glass skin look would be complete without a glowy sunscreen. And I have three different options for you. I have the Super Goop Glow Screen. This is a chemical-based tinted glowy sunscreen. This is extremely glowy. It's broad spectrum SPF 40. My only con for this one is sometimes it stings the eyes if I get it too close to the waterline. So sometimes what I like to do is I like to powder around my eyes before I apply this with a setting powder to prevent it from migrating to the eye area. But this is absolutely beautiful. If you're having a particularly dull skin day and you want something that's really gonna create that faux glow for you while also protecting your skin, this is truly a beautiful product. I also love the Neutrogena Invisible Daily Defense Sunscreen SPF 60. This is a clear version of the Super Goop. It still has a ton of glow and kind of sheen and not shimmer, but reflect in it. But it's SPF 60, which we love. It's chemical based. It still has the stinging eye problem. So that is a con for this one. I have to be careful when I use it around the eyes. I can make a separate video on little hacks that I do to prevent my eyes from stinging when I use sunscreens like these. But if you can get around that, these are both absolutely beautiful and really lightweight on the skin so they don't feel heavy or anything. Two other options is this hybrid sunscreen from Apostrophe. This is SPF 43 Broad Spectrum. They came out with a sunscreen that's formulated for acne prone skin, but it's also really amazing for dry or dull skin because it is so, so glowy. Now this is a hybrid formula, so it contains both physical and chemical filters and it's designed with sensitive skin in mind. This is clear, it's not tinted or anything, but just the formulation is really, really beautiful and glowy. And then lastly, for a mineral formula, I absolutely love the Elta MD Broad Spectrum SPF 44. This is a tinted sunscreen and it gives the most beautiful glow to the skin. It's a little bit less highlightery and reflecty than say the Super Goop Glow Screen, but it's also really beautiful and you can get away with using it as a light makeup base as well. And last but not least, a newer option has been the Tower 28 Sunny Day Sunscreen. This is very, very glowy, but not too glowy if you are more on the combination side. And I absolutely love this one because not only is it mineral based, so it's great for sensitive skin, but it also comes in so many shades. So this is finally a mineral based sunscreen that does not have a white cast. And I can truly say that because they have extremely deep shades as well. So when you're using a tinted sunscreen, that is great. You just skipped a step, but you have to be using enough. So I like to play the three fingers rule, three finger lengths worth of sunscreen because with tinted sunscreens, you might be tempted to use less. And so you're not getting that protection. And I recommend spreading it out with your fingers first to make sure you get even coverage. Then I take a beauty blender just to pat everything in place. And then of course for SPF on the lips, I like to take this color science. This is SPF 50 and this is a color bomb. You can use this on the cheeks and the lips. I'm just gonna pop this on my lips and this is gonna be 
my SPF protection on my lips. And if I want to, I can create a monochromatic look on my cheeks as well. But I'm gonna show you another glowy blush that I absolutely adore. This is the Euphoria. This is a chemical reaction blush oil. So the way that this works is it's a kind of colorless product, and then it transforms into a color based on the pH of your skin. Now it's not as individual as the marketing will have you believe because everyone's pH is around the same. It's usually like acidic, so around four to five. But this turns into a gorgeous baby pink color that I did not think I would like originally. It's not really a shade I would gravitate to, but I absolutely love it. And it just gives such a beautiful sheen to the cheeks. It looks like I have highlighter on before I even put highlighter on. It just melts into the skin. It doesn't emphasize pores or texture. And it's just the perfect makeup, no makeup blush. I mean, can you see this? I like to go in with a couple layers. I'm gonna take another highlighter. This is the Refi. This is such a gorgeous highlight. As you can see, it's kind of a golden color, so I didn't think it would work on my skin tone, but it actually blends in seamlessly. And I just pop that onto the cheek area and kind of blend it with the sponge. For concealer, I like to keep it pretty minimal. Today, I'm gonna to go in with a color corrector. This is the Armani Retoucher, and this is in the shade one. Look how thin this wand is. This is a really subtle way to high dark circles in a really undetectable way. I find that it's more coverage than the Touche Eclat by YSL, but it's also really, really thin. So it doesn't emphasize any dryness or texture under the eyes. And I like to just go in with this brush. Now you can set everything. I might not because I love just looking wet, but I have really dry skin. So if that's not you, let me show you a powdering technique. Of course, we're going in with a Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Powder. This is super pore blurring and it's not gonna mess with our glass skin finish. I'm just gonna take a fluffy brush and I'm going to just press it into the areas that I don't want too much glow, which would be the side of my face, my chin where I have a couple pimples, under the eyes, and we're also gonna do do the eyelid. Okay, I'm just gonna do my brows and mascara and I will be right back. All right, I am back and this is the finished look. This is how I keep my skin looking glassy or glossy all winter long, but it's also beneficial to my skin. It's not just a makeup routine, it's a skincare and makeup infused routine. Let me know what tips do you do and incorporate in your wintertime routine to get glass skin? I'd love to know. I hope that this video gave you some good inside, leave me a comment down below letting me know if it was helpful and I will see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye!